I'm one of these people. Actually, this is a really good. Okay, here we are. Right. <laughs> Save it moment. Save it. Right. Okay. I'm going to start this with the question. You're like right. a mad scientist. He is. I, I feel like no, he's got I the just... campus and the paints, so and we're just watching him fling stuff around. It's awesome. I know. It is. <laughs> I'm going to start it with a question. Okay. Hey guys. So I'm. I just hang on. <laughs> Sorry. I think. Hey I guys. I was just. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm quiet. I'm quiet. <laughs> I love it when it works out. I'm glad it's worked out did, because yes. I, for me, it just feels like a f-ing whirlwind. <laughs> Follow, review, and share the podcast about podcasting. Welcome to Follow, Review, and Share. It's the podcasting show about podcasting. And we've got an exciting one today. Have we not, Neil Velio? Oh, it, it, t- I'm really, really pretty. I mean, t- listen, I was excited about the previous two. They were two cracking episodes to record and produce and to listen back to. But I think this one, we might have already reached our extra special episode. Only three oh. in. Follow, review and share is sponsored by Libsyn. No, surely not. Surely not. We have a lady on with just a fantastic voice. We're going to speak to a pro voiceover about pro voiceovers. We've also got Brendan on from Podpage. Now, you'll hear a bit during this where I'm very confused about the terminology that Neil threw in there, an HQ for your podcast. I still don't even know what it means, but (laughs) Brendan's from Podpage, and it's a great bit. That's on the way. Follow, review, and share, featuring Neil Velio from Podnose Podcasting and Pete Allen from Carrot Cruncher Media. And something because it kind of kicked off a little bit on LinkedIn, didn't it? Because the other day we brought out follow, <laughs> review, and share. And um, Steph, who's our global community correspondent, which is a great title, by the way, she kind of kicked <laughs> off and she went, guys, I'm a little bit far down the billing. I'm a bit far down the billing. So <laughs> we like to keep people happy who we work with, especially people with good titles like global community correspondent. God, yeah. So Steph <laughs> is yes. right at the top of the bill. There we go. See, you, you know, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like you don't ask, you don't get. And and Steph um, made me feel really bad. Um, she sent me a message straight after it going, you know what, Neil, I'm not happy about this. I'm over the one hour mark. And it's just, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm now finding myself uh, just uh, questioning my entire existence. And do you know who I am? I am wait, really freaking wait, important in the podcasting wait. space. And I thought, you know what? She's right. She's got a good point. Entire- so this is. <laughs> I've got to ask Neil, was that a direct quote? Because I didn't see that. No, of course it wasn't. No, no. Of course it wasn't. <laughs> Steph was incredibly nice, as Steph always is. But Steph is Steph is one of these people. That, so I'm going to I'm going to say this now, right? I oh, love Steph to bits. I've I've loved Steph Aww. for a long time because I'm really really proud of what she's achieved in not only for for herself in the space, but for the space overall. She's, you know, she's really she the the space would be a lot worse off if not for her existence in it. So I do respect her a great deal. And when she turns around to me and she says, you know what, Neil, do you know who I am? Seriously, I can end you. (laughs) It's one email, just one email to the podcasting powers that be, and we will get your show destroyed. We will destroy you. And I was like, do you know what? Wow, this woman, I ain't missing her. She's coming on the episode intro next time. So there we are. Here we are. Wow. I am, of course, joking. That was never. That never happened. I'm glad because I'll be honest. I went quiet then, not um, just because I was bloody scared of Steph. I just I really don't want to. As was I. It's true, you know. The the and and this is the thing. And and Steph will tell you this as well. You know, since I excitedly told her about Libsyn kindly agreeing to you know get behind us on this show and support us and sponsor it and you know and, and put their name to it. And I excitedly told Steph about it. And I said, I'd, you know, I'd like to get her included in 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 a big way because of what she does for the the global community and and what she represents in the space. So then to sort of almost slide it in the post. What yeah, look. It was a busy episode. There was a lot of gold in there and we needed to get to the marketing stuff pretty damn quickly because it's one of the biggest questions that is on the Facebook podcast bowel movement forum on an almost daily basis. How can I get more listeners to my shonky podcast? Right. So I thought, well, it's important to deal with that. But... That said, the global aspect, as I said to her, is a big part of my why, was bringing more attention to the global aspect. And therefore, I would be a massive hypocrite 
if I just let that stand as as you know where she ends up in in the episode. So I'm proud to say Steph has been moved up the ranking order of the structure of this podcast episode. That's Yay, great. Steph! I go, <laughs> Steph. Wow, that Yay. fantastic. Well, well done, Steph. But I've just realised, you know, just talking about that or listening <laughs> to you talk about that, that if if you kick off. You get good stuff on this show within this team. Okay. And what I'd like to say, <laughs> right? what I'd like to say, Neil, is right. Steph is great, absolutely, and she is very. Her title is very justified. Her title of global community correspondent that that's dignified. That's good. That's impressive. I'd yeah. just like to say, mate, where's my title? Yeah, Pete needs a title. I need a title, and it's, and it's well, got to be as good as that. Yeah, it's got to be host, better mate. than that. You're the host. <laughs> I'm the co-host. You, you, uh, you, you outrank me. Essentially, no, I don't. you Stop could, you now. could kick me off the show. <laughs> I'm not and many would probably love it if you uh, did. To be fair, I'm not <laughs> going to do that because if I did that, it would mean I'd have to do some work rather than just rocking <laughs> yeah. up when you tell me to. Yeah, have you got a spare two hours of your week to do some editing? <laughs> I haven't, mate. No. <laughs> and I, I, I had a feeling, Neil, when I DM'd you first because I am a subtle person sometimes, and I was like, hey. You know, maybe earlier I was like, please, this is kind of, uh, I know consumption data a little too much to, to know most people won't make it there. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is a social media moment because Neil, we like to fight. And why not fight visually? <laughs> so that's why I did that post out there because I was like, I know he's not going to take it personally. And but some people might be curious and have a listen because of the wait, you've wronged me kind of vibe. So that that was. Partially oh, why I did that. do you see what she's yeah. done there, Pete? What yeah. she's done what there she's is, done is there. she's made it look like it's content now because she's backtracking. Yeah, it is I love it. <laughs> not not Although, only content, but it was also marketing content. Yeah. Which, funnily enough, Steph, yes. is a thing you were you were out trumped by last time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Although I did do a call to action in that tiny, tiny. Was that a tweet or LinkedIn? I don't remember. I think it was both. Where I said, you know, do contact Neil or Pete and let them know if you want to hear me earlier in the episode. Did anybody contact you? Oh, you wouldn't oh, this... believe it. The phone was ringing off the hook. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah I was guessing no. <laughs> it was not. It's the awkward moment where I have to lie. I have to no. go back to my radio days and say, well, actually, Steph, no. um, caller number 72. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't Martin. Lie. Don't lie. Because if it didn't Brentwood. work, then I just won't do it again. So it's just yeah. a learning moment. But but thanks for taking my, my uh, complaining moment into consideration. It's a pleasure. It's, and, and, you know, you are you are incredibly important to this show. And, and do you know, what? it was about time that we had you featured um, in the intro anyway, just because it's it's tremendous fun. But no, th- thank you on behalf of everybody that listens to follow, review and share for, you know, the amazing passion and advocacy that you give to the space on a, on a daily basis. And uh, in fact, it's good timing because Pod Rev Day is coming up uh, pretty much immediately after this episode is released. So do you want to quickly um, dive into what you want people to do about that? Sure. Podcast Review Day is on the 8th of every month, and we review your podcast anywhere. We are not platform-specific. And then you bring it over to Twitter, which is platform-specific, and you either put a link or a, a screenshot to your review, write something nice, tag the click creator if you can, and use the hashtag P-O-D-R-E-V-D-A-Y, Pod Rev Day. The whole day globally, we just have people, we just, there are people tweeting their reviews and you can come back and take a look at what other people are reviewing, talking about the engagement that happens, all that kind of stuff every single month. That's brilliant as well. And I I really think it is. There are so many podcasts out there. And as, as, you know, someone who's in the podcast space, one of the big questions when I say what I do is, oh, right, what show shall I listen to? What show shall I Mm -hmm. listen to? Well, you know, it's just the curation of content can be so tricky sometimes. And something Mm -hmm. like Pod Rev Day just really fixes that and makes it so much easier. So looking forward to it. Follow, review and share. No, I mean, seriously, do that in your favorite app of choice. Thalia, whenever we have a good guest on this show, I'm not around. Yours record it without me. What's going on? Is this personal? <laughs> What's happening? Seriously? What goes I just... on? <laughs> I'm very selfish, Pete. What can I tell you? And I know that you'll you'll be really nice and you'll be, you know, you'll be thinking about the listeners and, and, and worrying about what they get out of the conversation. Whereas I just want to know how much it's going to cost me and out and start getting my podcast page sorted out. That's, that's, that's really so. what it's about. Yeah, well, you've done it again, you see, by talking to Brendan from Podpage without me, without me. 
Pod page is a it aims to be the simplest way for a podcaster to create a website. The idea kind of came from a lot of my experience. I spent a long time building software for creative people. I've worked with musicians, I've worked with app developers, and the common thread is there's this whole class of people who, you know, what they need to be spending all of their time on is creating content with musicians it's writing songs if it's app developers it's creating apps and if podcasters it's creating episodes and researching you know their their next interview the reason that we all love podcasts is because the content is great the reason we all love music is because the music and the music and the song is great the other stuff that these creative this creative class of people needs to deal with like like websites is necessary as part of the distribution and the and the community building but it's not where you want that person or those that group of people spending their time like you don't want a great musician spending all their time thinking about like website management right you want to give them something that's super easy for them to use that they can that gets out of their way and just helps them spread their content other places and so with podcasting i saw the same thing happening that i've seen in music before which was i would go to search for someone's website and typically they would either a podcaster would have a broken website which was like an old wordpress site that they hadn't kept up to date or in, in the majority of the case, they didn't have a website at all. And so when you would search for a podcast, you would get links to Apple and Spotify and Spreaker and all these other sites. And so I started talking to some podcasters about why. And a lot of it was they were like, ah, I just don't feel like dealing with that website. It's fine just to go to Apple. And the problem is that it's really not fine. If the only way you're connecting with your community is through these distribution platforms, it's great. If you're getting a lot of downloads, the, the fear is that you're not actually building a community. Apple is building a community or Spotify is building a community with your content. And so um, I personally just feel like a website's the easiest way to have a direct connection with your listening audience without, without totally relying on these big platforms. Uh, and so that, you know, all of that kind of got me thinking like, I've done this before with music. I've done it before a little bit with app developers. Like I can probably solve this problem for podcasters in a more straightforward way. And so uh, that's where it started. And it sort of has been a, a, a small project that has grown into a big project, but you know, the initial aspirations were, Hey, how do we just build you a nice looking site with the content that's in your feed and let you get it set up really quickly that, so you don't have to come back and ever deal with it again. And it's turned into a much more um, customizable and complex project. But you know, with that same initial goal of, I don't have a website, I'm a podcaster. How do I get a website in five minutes that looks great that I don't have to really worry about? In terms of like the SEO and discovery and all that kind of stuff, how much of a difference does it make for someone getting their podcast found? Well, I think this is where if you look at it as how many more downloads will I get because I have a website, I think that's probably you'll never be able to you'll never be super happy with the results there. Because ultimately, like even with the website, you're still gonna have most of your your activity on these podcast players. And I saw it. I don't think that the, I think that website kind of serves two purposes when it comes to discovery. One, if you search for a podcast and if you have a website that is well search engine optimized and the website and domain name is the name of your podcast, you're almost guaranteed after a certain period of time, after you launch it to be number one spot on Google, which is pretty remarkable because in most cases it's really hard to get the number one spot on Google, but like Google will look at your website as a more authoritative source than Apple every time, even though Apple's a massive, you know, multi-trillion dollar company. When Google's deciding like, okay, someone's looking, you know, someone's searching for Brendan's podcast about ducks. If that's the name, if that's the name of my podcast, like Brendan's ducks, if someone searches for that and I've got brendansducks.com and I'm also on Apple, like Google actually will say, well, you know, the way that they think about it is like, if we were to ask someone for the the single source of truth about this podcast, who's the best person to ask and when they're, they're evaluating websites, you know, they'll look at Apple and they'll say, Apple's pretty good. I mean, Apple has all the podcasts on there, but like they also have all the podcasts. They know everything about all kinds of podcasts. Like maybe this would be, maybe the right person to ask would be the actual podcaster or, you know, the actual company or the, the small business or whatever, whatever it might be. But like, so they'll look at the domain name, especially if you've changed your website in your podcast feed. So all of these platforms actually are pointing to your website. Google will pretty quickly be like, oh, this website must be the, the single source of truth that everyone else is relying on. And so that's why you end up coming up number one pretty quickly. Now, will that get you more plays? 
if I'm searching, if I'm, you know, an Apple podcast user and I'm searching for a podcast, I might not click your website as if I see you in the search results, because it might just be easier for me to get to Apple. Um, or I might click it to get sort of the authoritative source on it. But I think the where the website comes in handy a lot is you're actually able to drive people there as the podcaster. So when you're reading out, you know, the end of your show, when you say like, oh, thanks for listening, um, please go to mydomain.com slash 30, because it's episode 30 or whatever, and read the show notes, like you can control that surface so well. So when they show up on your website, you can ask them for their email address, or you can ask them to support you on Patreon, or you can get them to listen to other episodes that are very related, right? Like if I listen to generally what Apple's going to do when I finish listening to an episode is move me to the next episode or potentially take me out of that podcast and take me to a totally different podcast altogether. Cause that's the next thing in my library. If you send someone to your website, like you can just give them a lot more context around other things that listener might be interested in and you can start building a relationship. It's not really about getting more plays. It's having a better connection and being able to build a better relationship with the listener. No, I absolutely appreciate you. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's really interesting and it's useful for people to get clarity on why you would do these. I mean, that's what this show is about. It's about helping people to understand. You're talking about controlling your space and your environment. I think that is something which a lot of podcasters don't realize because we've seen it, haven't we? You know, Clubhouse, all the rage that came along and all of a sudden people are starting to desert that. That. They're going into Spotify now and doing green room. This is something that's just brand new. So, you know, things are moving and shaking all the time. And I think having somewhere you can control that audience and make sure you're staying in touch with them is really good. But what's really, really good about a pod page that I've understood is that you actually integrate all this stuff, don't you? So you don't have to get necessarily plugins. Am I right when I say that with your version 2.0 that you've just launched? Yeah, you know, it's funny. One of the best things that I've you know, I've got obviously gotten over the many thousands of users that we've had over the last year and a half. I get a lot of feedback on the people who are moving over from WordPress or evaluating us against WordPress. And what I've found just from listening to our users is um, one of the best things about WordPress is the huge plugin library. One of the worst things about WordPress is the huge plugin library. It's awesome because you can add functionality to your website really, really easily with this enormous list of of plugins. It's bad because the plugins are all managed by these different companies and they tend to not man- like keep them updated. And when WordPress updates their, you know, if WordPress makes an update, it might break a plugin and the plugin developer might no longer be working on the plugin and things break. So I, I have so many podcasters that come to me and say like, I loved my WordPress website the day I built it, you know, three to six months later, I logged in and it just turns out like I needed to re up, you know, redo a bunch of, you know, reinstall a bunch of plugins, configure a bunch of stuff. like upgrade a few of them. There's just like, there's, it was a lot of work. So that said, the, what we try to do with PodPage is like, I want to give the opportunity to use a lot of these third-party services, you know, f- primarily because I believe that a product should be really, really good at one thing and not try to do everything. And so I don't want to be the product. I don't want to like build word or podcast hosting because like there's, these hosts are great at that. I want to be the best place you can come to build a website for your podcast end of story. And so when it comes to adding additional functionality, like I don't want to figure out new mailing lists and spam blocking and everything that goes into being able to send emails to a large group of people. I just rather integrate uh, ConvertKit and MailerLite and uh, MailChimp and all that. So like we try to plug into a lot of these other places. uh, But what I'm trying to be really careful about it, because I don't want to end up in the state, the state that WordPress is in, which is like, oh, you can have all these plugins, but they're all going to break with the the lot. We pushed out sort of the a huge update to PodPage yesterday, which sort of dubbed PodPage 2.0. But it has the beginnings of a, of a library of plugins. But I don't even really want to call them plugins, because when I think about pl- plugins, like I think it's this like third party ecosystem. These are all we're more like Apple in this way, where these are all going to be vetted. We actually will have a big part in building them. We'll be working with the companies to build them, but we won't be like, hey, you know, a random company. Yeah, you can add functionality to our platform without us really paying attention to it. So we want to make sure that you can use the tools that you want to use on your website without getting in a position where those tools can break your website. Pitch me like you've never pitched before. I'm going to shut up now. I'm not going to say a word. And you have got almost like an elevator pitch. You've got 60 seconds to explain as well as you can to our listeners to follow, review, share, 
Why do we need to go with PodPage rather than WordPress or Squarespace or any of the other website builder tools that are out there today? Okay. Well, I will start in a sort of a non-traditional way. I would say before you go with anyone, including PodPage, go to your host website and see what kind of website they give you for free because you're already paying for a website through your host. And some of those hosts have great websites, especially at the beginning before you have a lot of complexity. So start there. Like the number one thing I would say to any podcaster is go to Google Domains or GoDaddy, spend 10 to 15 bucks on a domain name for your podcast and associate that domain with a free podcast website that your host already gives you if you don't want to spend more money, because that alone will get you starting to be thought of by Google as like an authoritative source. So after you do that, you really have four choices. You have your podcast host, you have WordPress, you have Square, something like Squarespace and you have PodPage. If you don't want to spend money, you're probably going to end up with your podcast hosts, which is great, putting a domain name on that. If you want to spend money, you're really looking at uh, WordPress, Squarespace, or PodPage. Squarespace versus PodPage is pretty simple. Squarespace is an amazing service, and fundamentally, there's a lot of things they do better than PodPage, but the thing they don't do is they don't, they're not built for podcasters. So with PodPage, you plug in your RSS feed, and every time you release an episode, PodPage creates a new episode page for you. We search engine optimize it. We submit it to Google. We pull in all your show notes. We put your podcast host player on the page. We pull in any extra media you put on it. We pull in your transcripts. It's just done automatically and you don't have to think about it. With Squarespace, you actually have to go in and think about like, oh, I'm releasing an episode. I need to create a new post. I need to do all this stuff. So between the two, like you're not really, you're always going to be better off with PodPage, in my opinion, because everything about it is built very specifically for podcasters. We import your reviews from Apple and Podchaser. We have voicemail features where people can leave you voicemails that you can put in your, your podcast. Like everything about it is geared towards podcasters. So then it really comes down to PodPage or WordPress. And the way that I say is if you need and want ultimate customization, go with WordPress. Because you're, you're going to be able to touch the code and you really can build some great stuff. And you probably, if you're super successful, you might leave PodPage one day anyway to go to WordPress because we can't give you the customization that WordPress gives you. That said, you probably don't need that customization and you probably don't have the time to figure out WordPress. And so start with PodPage. If it's not enough for you, then go to WordPress. Don't go to WordPress because you're told it's free because with WordPress, you're going to have to pay a for hosting, you have to pay for backups. The plugins all cost money. And on average, PodPage is way less expensive than, than WordPress is once you pay for all the stuff. PodPage, you know, on, on the most expensive level, PodPage is 180 bucks a year. And so it's 15 bucks a month. You will spend more than that on Squarespace. You'll spend more than that on WordPress. So that would, that's what I would say. Check out your podcast host. See if that's enough for you. You won't get much customization and you won't get any listener communication tools or anything advanced, but it might be good enough for you at the beginning. And if that doesn't work, just try PodPage. You literally will take in under five minutes, you'll have a website that you can play around with. You will not have that with WordPress or Squarespace. Um, and when I say you'll have a website, I mean, you will have a website with all of your episodes, with all of your reviews, with all of your artwork, five minutes. So try it and then see if you want to go with the other ones. That was nicely done. I might have to re- I might have to loop the uh, the clock sound effect a few times, but I, you you basically you got the ballpark there. So that, that's really good. well done, Brendan. That was fantastic, and I thank you so much for your time, Brendan. It's been really really insightful, and we wish you the best of luck with PodPage. Awesome! Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Podcasting news. Polarizing podcaster Joe Rogan has contracted Corona. I want recognition for that brilliant alliteration there. He's been quite openly anti-vax on his terribly dull and overly long podcast for quite some time now, and he's repelled a lot of humans who probably wouldn't have listened to his show anyway, to be fair, by suggesting that young, healthy people don't need the jab. Turns out, he probably did. I got fever sweats and I knew what was going on. He's quoted as saying, probably amid a marijuana stupor. The London Podcast Festival is currently going on as this episode goes to publication. You'll likely be particularly interested in the programme for the next weekend, as in the 9th of September weekend, which is tailored towards the creation aspect of podcasting. One of the highlights of the events is what appears to be a live taping, as the Americans would call it, of the guilty feminist. Do you have a Roadcaster Pro? No? Oh, then are you even really a podcaster, bruh? 
even I have a Rodecaster Pro, and a lot of people would say I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm recording this podcast into it. So I guess my next question is, what's stopping you? Is it the price? If it is, you may as well just skip this story. Tascam have revealed their very attractive-looking competitor. It's called the Tascam Mixcast 4. I've got no idea if it's any better than the Mixcasts 3, 2, and 1. I do know that it's apparently no better than a Rodecaster Pro, because it's basically the same. It's like you're a KFC customer, and FCK just opened next door with the same priced family bucket. Nah. Oh, and it's exactly the same price, so if the pain point was your bank statement, there's nothing new to see here. Move along. Thanks to our partnership with Libsyn, we can bring you the official podcasting stats for July. These are official. They are from the world's number one podcasting company, which is responsible for hosting pretty much most of the podcasts that are out there. So it's quite reliable. Here are the top five countries for all podcast listening. And number five, Germany at 2.4% of all podcasts listened to. At number four, Australia at 3.7%. Canada, 5.1% in third place. Just ahead of that is the UK in number two at 5.3%. And the number one country for all podcast listening, the US, duh, with 62.6% of all podcast audiences listening there. So what are people listening on? And to be fair, these stats are a bit messed up due to a glitch with Apple Podcasts stats measurement system that happened a few weeks ago. So not all of your downloads were clocked correctly. Bear that in mind when listening to these numbers. Apple Podcasts, 56.6% of all listens. Spotify in second place with 15%. Google rounds up the third place of the top three with 2.61% of all listens. And then behind them are Overcast, 2.06%, and Podcast Addict, 1.42%. Castbox and Stitcher, the next closest. Now, here's the number that everyone wants to know when they're podcasting. The median download number for all podcasts is 128. So... If your episodes are getting 128 downloads within the first 30 days, you're getting listened to more than half of the other shows that are out there overall. If your episodes are getting to 200 downloads within one month, you're onto something with your podcast, so keep it up. Here are the big numbers. This is the aspirational stuff. If you're hitting 1,000 downloads or more within a month, you're getting more listeners than 80% of the shows that are out there. 3,000? then you're getting more listeners than 90% of the shows that are out there. If you're getting 18,000 episode downloads per month, you're getting more listeners than 98% of all the other shows. And if you're hitting 32,000 downloads per episode per month, congratulations, you're a one percenter. Can I borrow some money? Podcast ponderings. What I'm going to do, first of all, is position this with a question. How do you guys start your podcast that you're producing for your clients? Let's go, first of all, with Steph. Well, it's changed recently, so I'll give you the before and after. The before is a totally engagement uh, gorgeous clip between them and the guests because I do interview episodes with my my own and with my get my clients. So I would p- pull one of that forward to be like twenty seconds or so. But honestly, everybody and their brother and mother and sister and you know whatever relative you want to put in there is doing that now. So I'm actually looking looking for th- trying to think of a different kind of catchy way to start podcasts. So I'm in a gray zone right now of thinking <laughs> creative thinking but that is that is my default right now is is pulling an engagement moment forward and then starting the actual intro and you know talking about what the podcast is about what the episode is about blah 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 with obviously some music somewhere in there but definitely having one of those moments because you know those engagement moments always come later in the podcast and you really want to know as a listener well i want to know as a listener that it's going to have that kind of momentum at some point 
yeah, absolutely. I'm with Steph on this. Uh, I think uh, things are changing. I have changed around a little bit with different clients. I work with a whole bunch of clients, and each podcast has its own different sound and its own different brand, and each client has their own set of ideals and, and their own format and what they do. But generally, you know, just like a, one of those little engagement moments that you never get at the start of an interview because the start of an interview is, hey, how are you? Yada, yada, yada. What are you doing? What do you do? Yada, yada, yada. And then the real fun stuff and the really great gold stuff comes once everybody's warmed up. So I tend to use a little bit of that and play that at the front and then get straight into get straight into it. But like I say, different clients require different things. And yeah, it's it's kind of like dependent on the podcast is my honest kind of like non-committal answer, I guess. I think you're both absolutely spot on. I mean, I, I agree with Steph that there is this sort of, there is a bit of a tendency. Everyone has heard Stephen Bartlett's Diary of a CEO and gone, that's how you start a podcast. You grab a, a short 45 second clip of the main body of the content and you whack that at the beginning with a nice little bit of piano and hip hop music behind it. And that's how you start. But I think Steph is, is, is 100% correct when she says that everybody is now doing that. And mm. for me, I think the way that I do it is I always sort of start where you you want the listener to go. So, you know, we're, we're told constantly, and I mean, Pete, in radio, we were told, you know, back in the day that you have 15 seconds to grab your listener's attention, you know, and, and if you don't get to the point within 15 seconds of your link, then your listener's dialing out basically and either finding another station or just not listening. And I think it's actually worse now. I think, well, the worse is the wrong word to use. It's different now, you know, with things like TikTok and short form content coming in and taking over. I think you're probably now, you've got to literally make sure that the first thing they hear is so engaging. They're like, I have to listen to this episode. So for me, it's all about telling the listeners straight off the bat, you know, this is what's going to happen. This is what we're going to talk about today. Maybe even before you play the clip of audio, maybe you just sort of get in there and say, right, Guys, today we're talking about marketing. Today we're talking about dancing. Today we're talking about how to make sure that your teenage son doesn't lock himself in his bedroom and, and get up to stuff that you're not sure of what he's doing because that's just unhealthy. <laughs> oh, we know what he's doing. We know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> we would but tell you, but Neil would bleep us out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, that for me is why it's really interesting that one of the guests we've got uh, on this episode, it, it literally her job is to get the listener's attention as quickly as possible. And funny enough, she does that on this show. She may not be the first voice that you hear on this episode or this podcast in general, but she's definitely there to do a job, which is to say, hey, guys. Right, okay, we've had our little bit of fun banter at the beginning now. Uh, Steph and Pete have been completely bored by Neil's opening rant here, but you know, <laughs> we're getting into a point here which is this is follow, review, share, which is all about helping podcasters with their podcasting and doing podcasty stuff. Follow, review and share is sponsored by Lipson. So, Andrea, I mean, the first question I suppose I need to ask you, I mean, this is what you do for a living, so you're obviously going to say, hey, voiceovers are great <laughs> because you get paid for them. But obviously for anybody that's sort of looking at doing any branding, podcasting, or even otherwise, you know, why is the benefit of having a voiceover, you know, like one of those cool flashy intros on the content? Well, I feel like there are two main things. One is more like a basic, just surface, self-evident answer. And the other one is more like a psychological answer. Um, oh. So yeah, I know. Uh, digging deep. So it when you have a professional voiceover introducing your podcast, it immediately sounds like you've given some thought and consideration into presenting yourself as professionally as possible. And maybe you've even invested some money into this because generally people are starting a podcast. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because they want to help promote an idea, help promote their business, you know, give out information about a topic that they're an expert on and they want to be taken seriously. So it's important to choose people and choose, you know, methods of making your podcast that make you seem as professional as you want to be. And, you know, I listen to a handful of podcasts and some people choose to do 
their own intros and that's fine, but it sounds like they're just starting out and they haven't really invested any kind of money into it yet. And the rest of the, the production value is fine. Just as a lay person podcast listener, it doesn't bother me if, you know, the sound quality is like, like if it sounds like they have a live environment and they haven't like really treated the space or anything, it doesn't bother me so much. It just sounds like they're just starting. And that's the impression that they're giving. It doesn't stop me from listening, but that's the impression that I get just as a listener. Um, So people who take the extra step to actually hire a professional voice actor to do their intros, their outros, and any little tags inside make it seem like they're taking themselves seriously and professionally, and it does make them stand out. So the second reason why uh, people might choose to have a professional voice actor do their intros and other different segment introductions through their podcast is that, you know, when you're listening to a podcast, you're not just sitting still staring at a screen, just taking in information. You're doing other stuff. You know, you're driving your car, you're folding laundry, your attention is getting pulled in lots of different directions. And if it's just the same voice, as cool as that person's voice might be, and as good as they are at delivering the information of their podcast, it sort of starts to drone on. And having another voice come in kind of gives you an audible cue to re-engage and listen because something else is coming up. It kind of cues you that, oh, wait, there's new information. Let me listen in again. I absolutely love that. That is spot on. That's exactly why, you know, sound design in a podcast is in a lot of ways, as important as it is in any sort of TV or audio production on the radio or an audio book. That is a really good point. Thank you for making that because that's that's something that a lot of people don't actually think about and don't consider, but it really is important, isn't it? Well, because, yeah, all media have their own methods of keeping your attention. And, you know, like books, they you could read the same book for five years and you have that luxury of taking that long, but books have a rise and fall in action. They have cliffhangers. They have a formula that's tried and true that keeps your attention. Movie scripts have a formula and they have to tell the story in two hours because you're a captive audience in the dark surrounded by strangers. So like everybody has their like criteria that keeps them having to tell a story a certain way. And when you're, you know, you're producing a podcast it's only audio. So you need to use tools that are going to re-engage your audience, keep people's attention because, you know, every way of telling a story of disseminating information is different. That's really interesting you said it because the funny thing is I really, I, I massively agree with you on that. It's And it's something that I try and hammer home to the guys that I'm working with, you know, that it is really, you know, they, there is that saying, isn't there, about done is better than perfect. But it is true that, you know, yeah, getting it done is great and having it out there rather than procrastinating and sitting on it. But, you know, if you what you're putting out there is trash, it's, it's only going to hurt your brand. And I think it's really interesting that you point out that there is that perception of slight amateur if all you're doing is doing your own self intro. And I know that is like you say, that is a very, especially in this country, I know in the U S everything's a lot more showbiz because you've got really showbiz people that are just like, you know, you walk down the street and there's a movie, an A-list movie actor, like living next door to you over there. Cause that's just the way things are in America. Whereas here we've only got like nine people on this little Island. So, you know, the chances of finding someone famous, very, very reduced, but yeah, here it is kind of a case of people just sort of don't bother with a voiceover they just come straight in and they do they, they make it all about themselves straight away and do their own sponsors and all that kind of stuff so really interesting so i suppose the question then i would then spring to from yet yeah, you probably need to have a vo to sound pro how does someone you know what what should somebody go by to choose one well that's another point that i just thought of like i think people think that it's harder than it is to find somebody. I think they think it's a complicated process and it's super expensive and it's going to take forever. And it's not like if you have your script written, you could get your audio back in like a day, two days, if you hire a professional. And I have, I mean, you could do a search for me online for my website, or you could go on to 
voice one, two, three, and you can hold an audition. I've gotten a lot of auditions that way and a lot of jobs that way, where you just sort of post a little blurb that you want people to record and send in and you choose who you want. You can set your budget. Um, you can even look on the Global Voice Academy, globalvoiceactingacademy.com website, and they have a rate guide that is really, really helpful and a good jumping off point for people to kind of determine how much is this going to cost? How much should I budget for this? And um, they have podcasting intros on there. And they also have like all kinds of other jobs. So you can kind of get a sense for the industry and what people are going for. Because people, everyone wants to be able to pay artists what they're worth. Right? It feels good. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so and having I mean, an idea of what that is, is really helpful. Because otherwise, you're just sort of shooting in the dark. Yeah, no, and I, and I, interestingly enough, when you said that, paying people what they're worth, I immediately thought of Fiverr, which winds me up, actually, because I, I'm sure you've got your, your own thoughts and feelings about Fiverr. I feel like Fiverr is probably one, in some ways, it's a great invention because, you know, if you need something done and you need it done now and you don't have thousands and thousands of dollars of marketing budget, which as a hobby podcaster, you're probably not going to. On the other hand, what it's done is it's made it harder for the real pros to, to get noticed. So, I mean, you know, is it really that? I mean, you're a pro, you do this for a living and you'll be aware of the sort of quality of voices you get on Fiverr. Is it, is it really like a void like the plague? How sort of serious is it if you go with a Fiverr voice? Well, here's the thing about Fiverr. You can find somebody on there for like super cheap. You totally can. Is that person taking themselves and their business seriously and their career seriously. If you need to re-record some of your tags in a year, is that person still going to be in business? Or will they have moved on to something else? Are they going to respond to you in a timely fashion? Are they going to care about the success of your project as much as you do? I don't know. They might record a perfectly good recording for you, but I think it's all those other extras yeah, absolutely. I think that's spot on, actually. And, you know, for anybody that's sort of really eagle-eared, is that it's eagle-eyed, isn't it? How, what, would it be? Would it be owl-eared? I don't know. Whatever. If you've got really good hearing, um, you might have picked up on the fact that Andrea is actually the voice of this podcast. Uh, she is the first voice you hear on, on it that's not ours. And, you know, there's a reason why we're working with Andrea, because obviously she is synonymous. I'm, I'm sorry to talk about you like you're not here, Andrea, but, you know, she is synonymous. <laughs> with quality and uh, you know i personally have used uh, andrea on a, on a number of podcasts in the past as well so for anybody that sort of hasn't heard you before what give us some of your your portfolio i know that you've done a video game right yes kind of a, a really award-winning well-received one an indie video game called cloud punk i'm the main character rania and cloud punk just had kind of a a sort of a sequel called City of Ghosts that just came out and um, people really love it and it looks super cool and I'm, I'm very proud of it because it's really my biggest job. What am I? Feels strange. You've been loaded into my vehicle's automata slot. Oh. Sorry, Camus. This is all I can afford right now. I was a bad dog? No, you were the best, Camus. I am just a hova now. Not as good. I know, I know. We'll get you a new body, I promise. It will just take a while. And it was such a pleasure to work with them. And they're like, very nice team. And people all over the world working on it together. So that's really neat. I have another really cool project that, of course, I can't talk about. <sighs> Please do tell us. <laughs> I'm not allowed. <laughs> 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 I signed a paper. I'm not allowed. But um, I also am the voice of a three foot tall Lego minifigure, Lady Liberty, that's in the brand new flagship New York Fifth Avenue Lego store just opened about a week ago. And I'm going to head up there this weekend to check it out. But she you walk by her and she's motion sensor activated and she tells you what's new in the store and things to check out. And um. And that's a that's a really neat one and a unique that's one. Amazing. So I can't wait to go check that thing out. I love that. So you're actually going to the store. I'm going to go. Yeah. So I got to ask you, what's that like? So, you know, obviously I can sort of relate to this 
to a point because I was on the radio for more than 25 years. So when I heard myself on a pre-recorded bit of audio or something and I was in the car listening to myself, it was kind of weird. I never really got used to that. Is it similar for you? Do you sort of go, oh my God, that's so weird hearing myself in a character talking to myself? Yes, definitely. And of course, like nobody in my family or, you know, nobody local cares. (laughs) Nobody cares. It was like, oh, that's nice. (laughs) Oh, that's cute. But uh, yeah, I mean... A couple summers ago, I did the voice of an angler fish, and she was part of, it was like a puppet, and it was part of a show that actually aired on Nat Geo Wild. So to actually hear myself on TV in prime time was super weird, especially since I was doing, kind of like doing a voice instead of just, you know, talking like I normally am. And so that was that was cool, but weird because that was still like a little early in my my career here, and it was a neat job. I love it. It sounds like yeah. so. Talk us through the process then, because obviously, what people have got in their heads when they think about voiceovers, they're thinking about the movies where you know someone goes into a booth and they've got a whole process, and they're doing the do re mi so la ti do and all that. <laughs> You know, the weird voice exercises and stuff. Talk us through what the process is for you. So say you get a podcast comes to you and they go, look, Andrea, we really want you to be the voice of our show. Well, you know, Talk us through how that works. Okay. Well, first I'd want them to tell me a little bit about kind of like the tone and the feel of their show. Cause you know, I don't want to come back to them with like, Hey, you know, radio announcer voice person. If like, that's not what <laughs> they're talking I feel about. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you want to kind of get a, a feel for what they're looking for, what their podcast is about. They'll send me the script, and I just you know go into my booth. I record a couple of takes of each line, and I send it off. I email it off to them, and they can either come back and say, "Hey, you know, could you change up?" Like this pronunciation is actually this, not this, or, you know, we want you to, you know, just like tweak a couple things here and there and, you know, anybody's happy to do it. And, uh, or the other thing is if people really want to direct my recording session, they can call in and we can do a Skype or a Zoom or anything, and they can listen in to my recording session and they can direct me as I go, uh, which is actually really helpful because then like, you know, it's done, you know, the client got exactly what they wanted. And I just email it off and it's done. See, now that is really, to me, that is why you do, uh, you know, a session with you rather than someone on Fiverr, because you ain't getting that kind of service on Fiverr. I'm sorry, I don't care how much you pay and that's just not going to happen. So that is the fact that we can sit with you and go, Andrea, give me a really weird noise here. That's that's amazing. And I've had to do that with you more than once, I think. You're like, weirder, weirder. <laughs> Exactly. The amount of times I've had you grunting and making weird sex noises, it's just, it doesn't bear thinking about for you. <laughs> now you just it. put a note in the script and I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Absolutely incredible. I love it. And and I think, you know, anybody that's listening to this right now will definitely, I think, be sold on the fact they need to get a professional voiceover recorded by you, Andrea Petrelli. We're going to put the, the links and everything in the show notes. But what I'm not going to do is rely on that because a lot of people don't look at show notes. So if anybody is sort of able to, to grab a pen and a bit of paper or maybe um, if they're in a passenger seat of a car and can actually get on their phone and put something in their notes, you know, where can they find you? What's Give us your details, Andrea. The best way to get in touch with me is to uh, check out my website, andreapatrilli.com, and it has the links to all my social media, my email address, demos, examples of work that I've done, all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of get a sense of my range and just shoot me an email. I love it. That's brilliant. Listen, thanks so much, Andrea. Really appreciate your time. And uh, hopefully you'll get a, a few follow, review, share listeners getting in touch with you to get you uh, putting your dulcet tones on their own podcasts. Cool, cool. I look forward to it. I mean, you know, well, what are your thoughts? Are, are you? Do you think that VOs could be a, a valid option for podcasters to consider putting you know, putting into their production workflow? I work with a whole bunch of podcasters. Different people have different thoughts. But my thoughts on a voiceover, absolutely, honestly, a lot of the podcasters I work with are not professional hosts. They're not professional presenters. They are business owners who are doing this in order to gain some marketing through a podcast. So what I 
often do is I do often go with professional voiceovers because those guys know how to get a message across. They know how to deliver those calls to action in a way that works. And let's not forget, they've also got blooming good voices, which is why we use them. So for me, I, I and 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 it sets up that we you know we sound good. We're a professional outfit at the straight off the bat, st- straight at the start of the show, followed by maybe for me a short clip would be something that's more like seven seconds long. So mm-hmm. if you can make it really snappy and then get the voiceover back on to intro the host, um, then for me it's all wrapped up voiceover everything into the presenter, into the host, into the business owner, whatever they happen to be, within 15 to 20 seconds. And I think for me, this is where the podcasting It Depends comes in. Because for me, as a as a podcast editor, I do work on mostly small business podcasts. But as a podcast listener, I tend to listen to more cultural stuff, stories and, and interviews that are more of the deep divey, this is why I'm a weirdo kind of stuff. And um, <laughs> not me, but you, well, you know, it's like I thought I was the only one that thought this felt this. Like, I listen to a lot of those interviews because, you know, I, unlike you two, I am kind of weird. <laughs> hey, so, uh, nobody said I was weird. And <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Made your own conclusions there. And, and for those kind of episodes, when it's a different voice, for when it's a voiceover person first, it and then it goes to the host, I feel like I've gotten a different impression of who's going to be leading that kind of intimate conversation. So it doesn't quite hit for me, but for more practical ones or businessy ones, I can see that working and definitely polishing things up. So can- you see it almost like a, they're stealing the thunder away from the host kind of thing no, rather than enhancing what not, their positioning is. Not stealing, but if we're going to go at this from a very hippy dippy energetic point of view, which is I guess where I'm going with this, it, it's a very different, feel like if I were just to just listen to the intro and I heard the voiceover uh, individual and not the host I would get a feel for that voice that that energy that whatever you want to call it and I would be like ah and make my decision on that and I could tune out because I'm not hearing the actual host talk about those things yeah, I think you've made a really, really good point there and you've distinguished the 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 difference between a podcast that's presented by a professional host, a professional presenter, uh, and a podcast that's produced by or, or presented by a business owner who isn't necessarily a professional in communicating. And, and I'm totally with you on that, Steph, in that when I listen to, you know, a really well-made podcast that may be a documentary, a cultural cultural thing or, or you know whatever the subject happens to be if it's presented by or hosted by somebody who's who's just got it mm-hmm. then I think probably the voiceover at the start is another step to get through before mm-hmm. you get to the good stuff I think you're 100% on it there actually Pete and Steph with the fact that so Steph you're saying about taking you know a, 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 the, the energy the difference in energy and, and Pete was saying about, you know, it suits certain types of shows better. I, th- I, th- I think a perfect example of this actually will be a song exploder. And, you know, forgive me for not remembering the guy's name. He's got a very complicated surname. <laughs> I can never remember it, but he's an amazing, amazing gifted creator mm-hmm. that he's, he's created this podcast where he introduces it as I'm this person. And my whole thing is I want to explore how songs are made. And I think mm-hmm. something like that, Absolutely. Yeah, that really... Oh, hang on. Shut up, Alexa! (laughs) Shut up, Alexa! Yes! Alexa! Quiet! Alexa! (laughs) Shut up! My God. What's she on about? So Song Exploder is, you know, that what... Why that works is that, you know, he's essentially saying, I'm on a journey here with this. This is my content I'm creating. So I'm with you, Steph, in the fact that it would be weird for suddenly someone to come on and go, this is Song Exploder, a podcast. <laughs> about, you know, it, it really does work. Whereas yeah. with a branded podcast, like you say, if it's someone like HSBC mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, Waitrose or, you know, Walmart, you know, to have the, the CEO of Walmart come and go, oh, bye bye, beef. Uh, it, it would, uh, that's very random. I don't like had a, a very thick conservative politician accent either. But there we go. Uh, you know, maybe it's just been taken over by an old Tory boy. We never know. But um, yeah, I think context is everything on these, isn't it, really? I think one thing that's really important, obviously, is when you work with professional voiceover, as Andrea is, and you explain to her 
the the show and the type of show and the type of read that's required, you'd be amazed. A proper professional voice. I mean, I know people with good voices, but a proper professional voiceover can be anything you want them to be. They can they can do the read in a way that in the way that suits your brand. And professional voiceovers are that that I mean. A lot of people nowadays, a lot of ex-radio people are calling themselves um, professional voiceovers, and they're not. Professional voiceovers really know. Follow, review, and share is sponsored by Libsyn. It's time to get the skinny from our podcast global community correspondent, Stephanie Fuccio. As you know, Pete, this podcast is uh, the podcast that is unafraid to go where other podcasters have never been before. It's yeah. like our very own... NC1701D that is exploring worlds that may not even have English as their first language. Do you see what I did there? That was, wow. I'm actually impressed (laughs) with my own ridiculousness there. The reason I'm making this ridiculously, and the other thing is as well, this this ticks a marketing box as well, because there's a huge amount of Trekkie podcasters out there. So we've just, we've literally just entered into a new category. We've (laughs) entered into a new category seamlessly there. I didn't even know that was a Star Trek reference. (laughs) I had no idea. I thought it was that a medical was, number or something. Yeah, I was like, I, what is that? I had no clue. Now, you see, what I've done, Neil, is the Trekkie people who you've just built up, I've just completely you've just upset shut them. down yeah. upset them because they're all Oh, my weird. God. Anyway, How next. does he not know that that is the call sign of the Starship Enterprise? I am never listening to this bloody podcast again. God. You said co sign in a podcast. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Im- impressive. <laughs> But of course, the spirit of Star Trek, it was exploring worlds of which it didn't yet understand and wanted to understand. And, you know, there were there were many languages that Captain Kirk and uh, later Jean-Luc Picard had to embrace (laughs) different cultures he didn't understand at first, but learned to to love them and learn to speak in different languages. And and he had a Klingon wedding with with Worf and learned to speak Klingon so he could officiate the ceremony. So, you know, language is a big part of our cultures around the world. So why then is it that with podcasting, we have got such a clean divide of you speak English, you don't speak English. And what sort of, you know, what are the gray areas, Steph, that can emerge from that? Oh, I love what you just did there. There are gray, (laughs) blue, green, purple and red areas. So here's the thing. I've got some data from the podcast index where I wanted to play with language Mm. and see as an English speaker, an annoyingly monolingual, no matter how many dishes I can order in restaurants, I am annoyingly monolingual with English. And I wanted to see how much of the podcast index was in a language I personally could understand. And do you guys want to guess what percentage of the 4,152,745 podcasts in the podcast index are in English? I'm going to take an intentionally wild swing to not ruin and uh, (laughs) do a spoiler and say, I don't know, 25%, Steph? Do you know, I was going to go with 15 to 20%. Oh. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Nobody gets the refrigerator today. It is... (laughs) A refrigerator, that's a bit, but that's beyond our budget on this that's show. A, that's a hell of a problem. We've not given it away, so it's okay. It was from a thrift store, secondhand store, charity uh, shop, whatever you want to call it. Okay, yeah. so see what I did there? Anyway. It'll be, um, leaking. It'll be leaking, no doubt. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you want a functional one? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> about 50%. Wow, wow. that's quite high, actually. It's that really is high. high. And mm. But that's not just... Like Neil mentioned native speakers, and it's not just native speakers. It's anybody who uses the language, right? And what was really fun was to dig down into the data. And I have to do a quick thank you to James from Pod News, James Critterland from Pod News, for scraping the data that I could then massage. Thanks, Critters. Thank you. We love you. you. (laughs) And so I started to take away the, because they they divided up. Well, okay. And this is podcaster data. So they've self-identified their language that they're using as either American English, Great British English, Australian English, Canadian English, New Zealand English. You get the idea. So I started to take away those obvious English speaking places. And then I got down to things like Indonesian English, Filipino English. Half of these over 4 million podcasts are in a language that if you're listening to this podcast, you already understand and could connect with the people making them. 
That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot, isn't that? Is a, that's a very high proportion. Just out of interest, for me, it sounds. It sounds when I'm when I'm listening to the podcast, there are a lot of American podcasts. Just mm-hmm. out of interest, out of that fifty percent of people mm-hmm. who speak English, how, what percentage of that is United States English? That's oh, a really good point. Good yeah, it's over four hundred thousand. So that's what is that ten percent? That will be 10%, four million. Yeah, yeah, just over yeah. four hundred thousand. So quite a bit. Which is actually quite low. So 90% are the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good point. Again, just in the podcast index, which has a, a fair amount, but we can't pretend that it's every podcast that exists. Do you know what? Statistics give me a headache. And it's just, <laughs> it's, it's just half I, of the game. <laughs> yes. I do have to say that this side of it is probably my least favorite aspect yeah. of podcasting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, so it's, let's a that, it's a side that I dry, try and uh, draw my clients away from. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many people listen. <laughs> but incredibly but, valid. And I think the point that Steph is 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 making as well, and I, I agree, which makes this valid, is is I, it's an awareness thing, isn't it? It's it's a it's another point of of well, I hate to say it, the marketing term, but it's another touch point with you know with with your listener of consideration of of you know where are they first of all but then how do they talk you know what's their language how do they hear you how do they think about things and you know and and will your messages in your podcast connect with them in the intended way that is another consideration it is and i i also like to think of it as content not country like if you're talking about a certain gosh again i lean on the cultural podcast side So if you're talking about like a specific author who wrote something in English and you have people around the world doing podcasts on that author, you could actually search them out and and collaborate with them, not because they're in your geographical space, but because they're in your content space. So you can ignore the boundaries. You can ignore the geographical boundaries and you can connect and collaborate based on content, not on where you are, which I think is part of the beauty of being in this digital space. Yeah, I really like that. And and I can think of a lot of different kind of niches in which that would work really Mm -hmm. well. For example, you know, at the moment, especially, you know, international trade, things Mm -hmm. like that, whereby obviously you've got the, you got the whole Brexit issue with the UK for a start. So, you know, number one, you know, you, you probably got a, a, a very inquisitive market now who are looking at how they can maybe do trading and how they can do Mm e-commerce and commerce with, you know, areas outside of the European footprint, which we've been sort of, you know, shackled to for the last, you know, for the last so many years and and maybe sort of exploring how the Asian markets work, how Russia works, how the US works and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, on that token, you've got some very smart people who are massively intelligent economists who just don't happen to be speaking English as their native language or, mm-hmm. you know, or, or, or in general. So, yeah, I can see why that would be something really interesting to explore. Can you maybe think a bit outside the box with things like matchmaker.fm and, you know, um, whatever podcast guest of the week website has just launched? You know, can, can you think a little bit outside the box of looking at all the English speaking, you know, uh, guests or, you know, if, if you're not English speaking, you know, your own language? That's a really good point. And I don't want to say, I don't want to preface this like everybody should speak English in their podcast because I think your first or first few languages, whatever you, you use is completely valid to do a podcast with. I'm just saying it's kind of a cheater moment. If you do already use English in a fluent way, you can listen to and uh, communicate with folks who are making podcasts in this language with very little effort. Kind of an advantage. The Running with Jake podcast that we do, it does really well in Italy. It's like mm-hmm. one of the biggest one of the biggest running podcasts in Italy. And it does really it does really well all around the world. And I don't know if you guys uh, register with Ghana and Geo Seven or however you say yeah. it, which are Geo new Indian, yeah. Indian ones. Yeah, Geo Seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do really well on those apps yep. as well with most of the part. And, and it's because th- there are so many people in India consuming mm-hmm. that English content. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, for a start, I mean, Ghana, you know, most of the, uh, you know, the, the podcast influencers that I put in inverted commas will tell you that Ghana 
is as important in uh, in the Asian sort of community as you know Apple Podcasts is to the West. It's it's absolutely massive, mm-hmm. hugely engaged audiences, and it's yeah. absolutely and 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 I think that's why it's really important that we that we have this conversation because Steph is right. You know, we are on these apps, we are on these platforms, we are reaching these audiences in, in places that we we may never get the pleasure of ever visiting because they're so far away, and it's a one in a million lifetime chance to to visit. So you know. Why wouldn't we want to consider how we're, you know, again, to use that marketing, that phrase, touching them, you know, not in a dodgy way, in a very <laughs> legitimate, valid <laughs> podcastry way, but, you know, we're impacting on their lives and, and it's worth considering maybe if you can have a, a connection with somebody that is maybe based in India or uh, or based in another exotic location who can help you translate what you want to say to their audiences in their own native language in, in some way. That could be something worth mm-hmm. exploring so that you don't have to do the hacking it thing. You can actually sort of, you know, go out of your way to make sure that you make that va- very valid connection. And talking about languages and podcasts and all that sort of stuff, Steph actually does host a very good, I would say a podcast, but that would be a lie. It's it, it's a <laughs> network of podcasts of which a languages themed podcast is one of. And, uh, you know, just give us the, the heads up on that stuff. How can we, what is it and how can we hear it? And that's part of where my, the this whole chain of thought started was with, uh, yeah, with all of that. It's a Geopets language podcast. It's just Geopets language. Yeah exactly how it sounds <laughs> and we... sorry that's me typing it that's in the... <laughs> <laughs> On the... this is pete now sticking his earbud in yeah. and listening yeah. to that rather than actually yeah. contributing to this show so oh, uh, I found, yeah i found it i'm sorry i, I do realize i have the noisiest keyboard in the world <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> it, it, yeah. it sounds a little bit like a commodore 64 <laughs> from back in the day that's there we awesome. go that's there's awesome. one for our generation x listeners <laughs> <laughs> otherwise known as old Yes. I'm one of those. Love it. Yay. <laughs> we all are. We're all old on this show. That's what makes it so good. There we go. Yeah. No TikTok dancing on this show. Thank you. Do you have a question for the guys? Or do you have something you want to share about podcasting? Pete and Neil would love to hear from you. Email the show now. Follow review share at gmail.com. So that is it. Episode three of Follow Review Share. With Steph, with our co-presenter, not just our global co- community correspondent, which is a very good title, but our co-presenter, Steph. How was it, Steph? Was it worth complaining about in the first place? I mean, Speechless. I, 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 I'm on a roller coaster still. <laughs> I know. We've been recording for way too long, I'll be honest. I, I'm on a roller coaster still. I'm starting to feel a little bit sick. Anyway. <laughs> I think it was wonderful. Yeah. But Neil, Neil's a little out of control. Pete, I think you need to pull him in a little bit. Well, I'll be honest, it was um, kind of like, uh, for me, sitting in a schoolroom as a kid, and then there's one kid on one side of me arguing, and another kid on the other side of me throwing things at them. Yep. And uh, it's been interesting, and uh, I think we should do this again sometime, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. I'll let you know when I'm not available. <laughs> Follow, review, and share is sponsored by Libsyn. in the classroom and people going at each other here well, from my point of view I'm like, actually <laughs> this is a this funny. is a great is story funny. to tell pete actually yeah. so um one of the very first conversations that stephanie and i had um was when i'd just launched my uh, ah! business podcast your business needs a podcast and steph oh, very kindly listened to it and gave me feedback and her feedback was a voice note in fact i might see if i can dig it out and find no. it for the post-production of this show but basically she said your podcast makes me sad <laughs> Which Aww, caused me it did. Oh, my oh that's awesome God. That is worse. I was using an I statement. It is. That actually is worse. (laughs) The fact that she's got to have a way to tell me in voice that my podcast sucks. It's just brilliant. And I instantly loved her straight away from that because I thought, wow, this woman is so honest. I love that about her. So that's, uh, yeah, there's a nice little little moment for you there, Pete. If I can dig out the voice note, I'm going to definitely add that on. I don't think I've still got it because it was on my old phone, but yeah, you might. Of that that. One. Actually, you made uh, an episode out of it, Neil. 
That's true. I just need to get the audio. Yes, there we go. I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll oh, get the audio. No, and play it. no, Neil, so, Neil, um, Neil. I, I do not it. approve and, using that audio. <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> Stephanie has a problem with the show's intro. It makes me sad when people diss podcasters. I know there's a lot of crap out there, but there's also a lot of really good stuff out there. So it legitimately just made me sad. I just respect the hell out of you and I know what you're doing. And there's such gems in the rest of the episode, like really good gems. And I think it's really great that you're highlighting some really surprising and good things that are happening with business podcasts. And Mm -hmm. I think it's important to have a podcast about podcasting for business purposes. I think those are all really, really good ideas. Thank you. And all of that is what makes me really, really sad to... Uh Uh-oh. To, to do that because you are so good you're so talented you're so honest you're oh, such shush. an amazing Stop sound it. person an amazing podcaster an amazing Stop. person that you don't need to step on other people and make fun of other people to prove how good you are ouch okay thanks so much for that message stephanie and i do genuinely appreciate you taking the time to record and send it now <laughs> there you go. I don't know who owns the rights to it. I mean, there's a lot of talk about own, owning, well, owning the rights and oh, yeah. stuff. The podcast, but... It's a bit like you can't say I don't approve of you using the audio when you already approved of me using the audio. No, I didn't. I didn't. You did. You did. Did I? I sent you a voice note saying, is it all right if I play this? And you were like, well, oh, I don't know. I need to think oh, about shit. it. It was like 10 voice notes later. You were finally like, oh, oh. do you know what? It, I don't care. And then you pod faded, yeah. and I felt really guilty. I haven't pod faded. It's coming back, isn't it? Is There's it? an episode oh, recording. Yes, God. it's just that I've okay. been busy with this. Yeah. Oh, God. yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> For months, I've been like, oh my That's God, I'm the reason that he pod faded. I feel terrible. <laughs> I just want to sit and watch this all day long. <laughs> you don't have anything to do, do you? This is brilliant. This is brilliant. So now I've been accused of pod fading on a very, very no. current podcast. Oh, that just yeah. says it all. So not only did no. she give it a terrible sucky review, but now she's saying it oh. might as well be dead. I love it. <laughs> oh. So just so you know, we're changing the order of the episode. You will be turning up on the one hour and 25 minute mark on this episode. I'll so. be after the outro. <laughs> yes. in, yeah. in fact, what I'll do is I'll upload it as downloadable content only and stick a link to it in the show notes. They- <laughs> You're direct to DVD, you are, mate. Oh, my God. (laughs) You're in the bargain bin.